praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every one of us and to grant us goodness. My brothers, my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. He made us. And if he wanted, he could have told us to relax. And he will drop from the skies whatever we needed. We needed food. He could have caused it to drop from the skies or to be at our feet. We needed sustenance, money, wealth. He could have caused it to drop from the ceiling if he wanted. He could have. For example, if we wanted anything, your clothing, your goodness, your education, whatever it was, he could have made it such that we did not need to make an effort. No effort required. But you and I know that that is not how he has created us. He made us from the very beginning such that if we don't work, we will not achieve. If we don't try, we won't get. But if we do try, how much we get, he will determine. Subhanallah. If we do try, how much we achieve, he knows. It's up to him. For this reason, some people work very, very hard. And at the end of the month, they get a small amount. And some people work, but not so hard. But at the end of the month, they get a big amount. Some people work very hard and they get a big amount. It happens. But there is no one who just sits back, does absolutely nothing and they get. Something has to have happened. Someone might be thinking perhaps if a person leaves a wealthy parent or grandparent and they've left something, well, someone worked for it. Someone worked very hard. And a day comes when it is depleted because my brothers and sisters, man only truly appreciates what he has earned with his own sweat. What he did not earn with his own sweat, he does not truly appreciate it, even though he might slightly appreciate it. So, with this, we need to understand life is not going to be easy. You want to become a hafiz of the Qur'an, you want to memorize the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to make an effort day in, day out. You need to toil, you need to try hard, you need to struggle. You want to be a doctor in the future, you are going to need to go to school to work hard. Your parents will probably work hard to get to pay your school fees. And when they pay it, you will go to school. When you go to school, if you play games and you don't work hard, you will fail and you will be a dropout. But if you work very hard, you will get good results. If you get good results, your opportunities are increased. You might not be able to do exactly what you wanted, but at least some doors will begin to open because whoever tries... Allah will open his doors. Whoever does not try, Allah will not open his doors. The same applies to guidance. When you want guidance, you don't just say that, Oh Allah, I want guidance. And then you just stop. But rather, what you do is you ask for guidance and you go out and you search for it. You look for it. You make an effort to go to the masjid. You look for the knowledge. Look for the knowledgeable. Look for the correct books. Read them. Look for the correct programs. Participate in them. Then you will get the right guidance. When you have questions in your mind, don't keep them in your mind and think you are a genius. You need to find out from revelation and scripture what is God Almighty saying about this matter that I need to know about. And you are going to need to make an effort. The problem is laziness has overtaken generations that are coming in a way that people are not achieving. 
So without working hard, we are not going to be able to achieve. If you are prepared to work hard, you will stand out. You, one day you are going to be a big person. You will be someone who has achieved, even if it is, like I said, just learning the Qur'an. Ask those who have memorized the Qur'an how tough it was, how hard it was when they had to get up and read, when they had to read again and again and repeat and go back. That's something to do with the word of Allah. It will help you in this world and the next. But if you want to achieve a little bit of money to be able to get married, to be able to have a house, to be able to afford a little bit of clothing and food, you will have to also work very, very hard. Without working hard, what will happen? A day will come when corruption overtakes a nation because of laziness. When there is laziness, we feel that we are owed something that is not actually ours. We have not worked for it, but we feel entitled. That entitlement results in so many problems. People begin to pinch and steal. That is a problem in society that has taken over, where such societies do not attract growth because people are too scared to invest in it. Imagine you want to grow a business, but you know that everyone I'm going to employ is probably going to steal. What are you going to do? You're going to look for something else to do. Subhanallah. So this disease of pinching and stealing stems from a root. And that root is when we want something that is not ours. When we want something or we want to live upon a standard that is above our own. My brothers and sisters, if you earn $50, $100 uh, every two weeks or every month, you need to know your food, your clothing, your accommodation must be equivalent to how much you are getting. You cannot say, I'm earning $100 a month, for example, but I'm going to live in a palace in Borodale. And there the rent is 1000 How are you getting the 1000 So the brother says, hmm, I... Just make a plan, you know. What plan are you making? What is it? It means there is something wrong that is happening because, because you want to live above your means. Many of us have mobile phones. That mobile phone, we need to know what package we have, what data we have, how much we can afford. Can you afford to make a call or can you afford only to receive it? Are you a Wi-Fi person, which means wherever there is Wi-Fi, we are there. It's okay for as long as your budget and your expenditure is tallying. Don't be shy to downgrade your lifestyle. Don't be shy to downgrade your lifestyle to come in line with how much you are earning. Some people want to send their children to private schools where the fee is in the thousands but their salaries are so small and then they go to beg and they say, you know what, I need this and I need that. Yet, if you take a look at the rural schools in our country here, wallahi, they have produced better results than a lot of the private schools. Check the statistics, I'm speaking from knowledge. So it goes to show that it does not mean that you sent your child to a school that has more fee, so that child is now going to be a person who achieved. It's got to do with how hard they work. It's got to do with how dedicated they are. The problem is when we spoil our children, they tend to become lazier. Take a look at the rural areas of our own country. How many of those children do you find them playing on little gadgets and doing things? No, when they need to do something, they will go to the pitch and perhaps kick a ball, real games, they interact with human beings. What else do they do? They will go to the foul run and get happy because they are looking after the chickens, counting the eggs every day, taking them back in and they are happy. They will probably go and do something that is meaningful, cut the firewood and bring it back because that is meaningful, real growth. Whereas with us, it's all about gadgets, 
At what age do you want your first phone? Five years old. The baby is already crying. I need the phone. What phone do you need? Subhanallah. You don't need any phone. And if you don't give them a phone, they want to pinch the phone. When a person steals, number one, they have earned the wrath of Allah. Allah Almighty from the top will take away from their life something that they wanted because they took away from someone else what was not theirs. If it doesn't happen today, it's going to happen sometime down the line. So stealing is not for a mu'min. It's not for a believer. We don't steal. It's okay. We won't have those things. We will work hard with our books. We will study. We will sweat. One day when we can afford it, at least we may have some of that or we may be able to afford it for our children to a certain degree but my brothers and sisters when a person is not happy with what Allah has given him he develops a lot of bad habits he starts becoming jealous and envious of others who are working hard but brother you are sitting at home you have developed bad habits this person is working so hard so hard and you know what they are earning because of that hard work and their closeness to Allah. We are becoming further and further away from Allah. So someone might argue to say, but I'm looking for a job and I cannot find a job. Well, there are thousands of people who are looking for jobs. But from among those, some give up. If you gave up, that's where it stops. Don't give up. Keep on looking for that job. Keep on getting up every morning. Keep on going. Keep on trying. Try a thousand places. One day your door will open so wide that you will smile and say, Oh Allah, I waited for this. And I thank you. So opportunity stops when you stop searching for it. Remember that. Opportunity stops when you stop searching for it. If one day your business went bad, you suffered a loss. If you become depressed, what will happen? You will never be able to pay those whom you owe money. You will never be able to come up again because you gave up. But don't give up. One thing went bad. I'm going to work hard and learn from my mistakes. And I will do it properly the second time. If not second, the third time. And it will come right. I have read some of the lives of some of the wealthiest people on earth. Nearly all of them have failed in their initial attempts to secure a decent earning or job in life. Nearly all of them. They were either kicked out of the job, fired, they lost some property, they went into a loss because of their business going down, but they never gave up. So my brothers and sisters, if you are looking for a job, keep looking, keep trying hard, get up every morning, pray to Allah, and go out and try your best. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us never to give up. He says, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Work hard to achieve what you think is beneficial for you. If I think it's beneficial for me, for example, to achieve something, I want to become a doctor. I need to work hard. It's not going to be a joke. It's not going to be easy. I need to work very hard. If I want a good job somewhere, I need to go and prove my point. They might tell me you don't have a certain qualification. Well, if I am dedicated, I will go out even if it takes me one or two years. And I'm going to make sure that I come back two years later with that qualification. And I tell them I've done it. That is a person who's dedicated. Let's not become people who want quick money. We see someone driving a Mercedes and we say, tomorrow I'm going to show this guy I'll have a better one. What are you going to do in 24 hours if it's not pinching? May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I'm speaking like this because it's happening. You take a look at South Africa, for example, the amount of robberies, the amount of crime that is happening is alarming. And if we don't talk about being satisfied with what Allah has provided us, then where do you think we will be heading? We need to be happy. We have, you know, we are so fortunate. We cannot starve by the help of Allah. Why? Because Allah has blessed us with land that is so fertile that if you wanted to plant anything, it will grow. But you know what? We are too lazy. 
And those in the desert whom, when they plant something, it doesn't grow, they are trying to transform that land into land that will begin to grow because they know the importance of it. And we who have that gift from Allah, we are crying, hey, I didn't get tomatoes or tomatoes today. I didn't get them. But you could have planted them. Ah, who's going to plant? That's the answer. But you are lazy. Subhanallah, are you seeing what I'm saying? So I'm not saying every one of us should plant. But what I am saying is, we cannot claim to die of hunger when we have land blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us, such that it is fertile. The same applies. We have hands, we have feet, we have eyesight, we are normal, we can work. If someone is disabled, sometimes you find them doing a job. And you find those who are able, they don't do the job. And if you ask them, they say, there's no work. Well, I tell you, number one, we spoke about, you have to search for the job. Number two, my brothers, my sisters, when you have a job, look after it. Look after it so well and appreciate that there are so many others who would love to be in your position. Because shaitan comes to you and he makes you do something, say something. He makes you become unappreciative and he makes you then lose your job so that you regret and you are out. I was, I am now unemployed, but you had a job. So look after your jobs and let's not become from among those who are overtaken by shaitan with thoughts, thoughts, subhanallah. Those thoughts sometimes want to drive us far beyond where we are. It's okay to catch a public transport every day. I might afford a vehicle after 10 years or 15 years. I might not afford a vehicle, but guess what? The amount I get, I'm just about managing. I can feed, I can pay my rent, I can do one or two things. Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah. Another thing, when you have a job, I spoke about budgeting. But I want to add, don't waste your money. Don't waste it. You need to know, don't be extravagant. Don't, we use the term blow. Don't blow your money. Don't. Because it is a gift of Allah. Sustenance was written for you. Do you know that? Before you were born, it was already written how much you are going to get. Keep it. Use it wisely. Don't be stingy. Use it where you have to, but don't be wasteful as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't hold back. Don't hold back totally. And don't give completely. Which means don't be miserly. And don't be so generous that you gave away what you needed also. In the middle. There are many other verses that also apply or imply the same. So my brothers and sisters, the day we are overtaken by laziness and the day we are trying to look at other people's lives and comparing ours with theirs in a way that we have envy and jealousy, it's the very day we start thinking of wrong means of earning. One of the issues I've already spoken about is stealing and pinching. And that crumbles society. If you want to build a nation, you have to cut out stealing and pinching. And do you know what? One of the ways of stealing and pinching, unfortunately, is corruption through bribery. Bribery. When bribery gets to a point, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ has prohibited it from the beginning. But when it gets to a point, it destroys the very fabric of society. When you want something that is your right, you are not going to get it. Why? I don't see the money in my hand. But I'm getting a salary to do this job. No, you have to pay. If you cannot pay, you are not going to get it. That's it. Pay what? You have to give me something for myself. Let's never be like that. We do it, we will earn a salary, and by the will of Allah, we will be able to enjoy the blessings of that. What's the point of having a thousand dollars when all that thousand needs to go on medical bills? Whereas another person has two hundred dollars, but he's happy, he's sitting at home, he's spent, he's got a little bit of change, etc. It's called baraka, blessings. And that's why the happiest people are never ever the richest people. 
Go and check. They are not happy. Show me one rich man who's happy. They are not. They cannot sleep at night. They cannot. And I challenge you. It's difficult because there's so much of issues they have on their minds. This problem, that problem. And what happens with us. I said it last week in the same masjid and I'm repeating it again. Man is such that when you say, hey, you know what? The day I earn my first million, I'll be happy. Do you remember I said that last week? Then what happens? Your first million comes. Are you happy? You are actually more sad because you now want another million. I promise you. You now want another one. When you make your first billion, trust me. Well, at that time you can call me also, inshallah, it's okay. But when you, when you make your first billion, trust me, you are going to want another one. And, an, and you're not going to sleep. You're not going to sleep. Man cannot stop. Even if he says today, make my first million, I'll retire, I'm stopping. He won't. Allah says it already. We understand it already. That if man has a valley of gold, he'll want another one. Another one full of gold, he'll want a third. Until he dies and his mouth is filled with the dust, then it's okay. So, we need to know when you compare yourself with someone else that has much more, that is wrong. If you see someone who has more, say, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah, Inshallah, I'm going to work hard, let's try and achieve. No harm. There's no harm in trying. And there's no harm. You might even get beyond that person, but it will be through hard work, through happiness. You are not going to get something by dropping someone else down. You see, when you have a business, in order for that business to succeed, you have to prove it, you have to work hard, your product has to be good. You do not have to talk about the other business next door and say their product is bad, those people. Don't point at others, don't even say their name, not at all. You don't need to talk about anyone else. Talk about yourself and your product, make people believe in your product and you are going to proceed. The minute you start talking about someone else, it shows you have nothing to offer. It's sour grapes. It is perhaps jealousy. Perhaps our product is not that good, so we have to talk about others. Let's not do that. It doesn't work that way. Allah says to us, you work hard and we will open your doors. Like I said, the hadith says, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Then it continues to say, Wasta'in billah wa la ta'jaz. Seek the help of Allah. Seek the help of Allah and don't give up. Don't become lazy. Don't give up at all. Work hard. Keep on working for what you want. Like I said, if not today, tomorrow. If not this year, next year. If not next year, after 10 years. But that door is going to open. For as long as you keep knocking on the same door and you are trying hard, it will open by the help of Allah. Don't be lazy. So when corruption overtakes, what happens? Justice is lost. Because a person who would like something that is his right, he does not achieve it because he didn't pay a backhander. He didn't give that bribe. And this is why the hadith speaks about how it is a disease. Bribery is a disease. It gets to a point where only the wealthy achieve. And if you can't pay up, you don't achieve. And that is how society crumbles. So what can we do about it? People might say, what can I do? Everybody is corrupt. Hang on. You see, what you have said now is already a solution. When you say everybody is corrupt, there are three fingers pointing back at you. Subhanallah. So what you have to do? You have to say, we are not going to be corrupt. We are going to make a difference. Wow. I can only start with myself and I can only encourage others. That's all. But for as long as I know I've started with myself, that trend will commence and it's going to go far and wide. If any nation or any individual would love to see growth truly in themselves, in their lives, in that particular nation, one thing you have to eradicate is bribery. Without that, we are going absolutely nowhere. Nowhere. Because what's your right is given to someone else because they paid for it. And what is not theirs, they got it because they paid for it. Subhanallah. And if someone else pays more, it will go to a third party. That is what bribery is all about. So we need to speak about it at home, at our workplace, everywhere else to say, listen, no to bribery. And we start with ourselves. 
no to bribery. It's tough because society becomes used to a certain norm. Any small thing that happens, if you don't have that, you know, greasing hands, you are going to get nothing. It's going to get nothing. Imagine we actually know the terminology because that's what's happening. Subhanallah. You know, they look at you, they say, I remember once I was stopped some time back so last year. And uh, the man who stopped my vehicle told me, it's a hot day, how about a Coke? I said, yeah, no problem. I had a Coke in my cup. I picked it up, I gave it to him. He said, no, I don't mean this Coke. I said, is there another type of Coke here? <laughs> Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, it goes to show that it becomes the norm of society. We need to do something about it, inshallah. Let's pray. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for ourselves, our families, our communities. Let's pray for the globe. We need to effect a change. And Allah says, Inna Allah la ma hatta ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change a nation until each one changes himself. You change yourself, the nation is going to change. You keep pointing fingers, you achieve nothing. That's why I said a loser is he who talks about another man. But a winner is the one who talks about himself. What am I going to do? How am I going to contribute? I, I recall walking into an office somewhere and the people were sad and they were looking depressed and they were sending you from pillar to post. And I said, can I just talk to you guys for a moment? You know, Can we smile? Because we want to change the country, don't we? If we don't smile and show that we are enthusiastic about our job here, we're going to change nothing. You have, to happily cons you have to happily do your job. And then the people who come to see you will be happy and you created excitement. That excitement is already growth. Trust me, my brothers and sisters, when people are excited about something collectively, we are heading in the right direction, inshallah. But the problem, I am depressed, I am sad. The other one is sad, you come, you put a pen that way, he fills a form like this, he gives it back to you, he throws you to the other corner, tells you come tomorrow. All those things, they show depression. And depression not just in people's minds, depression in society, community, everything would go down. So let's have a positive attitude. Growth is coming. Solutions are coming. Jobs are coming. Everything is coming by the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep a positive outlook. Let's look at it positively. Let's make sure that we don't lose hope. I told you, and I'm repeating this. Your opportunities stop the day you give up. For as long as you did not give up, the doors of opportunities are totally open, completely. Keep knocking on them. Don't ever lose hope. Get up every morning. And go and search again, go and search again, go and try again, go and try again. One day the trial will open the doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those who are suffering ease. May Allah bless those who are sick and ill with cure. May Allah grant those who don't have jobs, beautiful jobs that they can take care of themselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those who have passed away with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help every one of us, every one of us in a way that tomorrow will be better.